The last time I saw you, the Sixers lose to Miami, and it's clear the roster's not good enough as is. Now we're starting to hear a lot of different rumors, including P.J. Tucker. Let's just ask you this just to start with. Despite his advanced age, do you think P.J. Tucker, if they don't have to give up anything to get him, could help this Sixers team? Uh, In a simple answer, Ty, yes. Uh, I like Tucker. He's a hard-nosed guy. As everybody knows, he can, you know, make a spot-up corner three. But he brings a certain intangible. He's a good defender. He's one of those kind of guys. He has a little Draymond Green in him. You know, he knows how to not just defend, but he he knows how to bother people. He's a seasoned pro. He he would be an asset, but I can't ignore the first part of your statement. He is 37 years old, so I'd be a little reluctant to a long-term contract, meaning three years. That's a little long for me. But but if the question is, Coach, then, get him at three years or Miami or Atlanta gets him at three years, at that point, would you make the sacrifice or would you draw a hard line at two years? Yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, These are the kind of decisions, you know, guys get paid uh, serious money to make. Uh, I think it's going to depend on the rest of your roster. And are you willing to put yourself in a possible hole for obvious financial reasons a couple of years down the line? For me, if you're going for a legitimate shot at a title, the answer is a simple yes. But I'd have to have, you know, pretty strong feelings that my team's a real – real legitimate contender all right now with that said part of the reason why there's that interest there is because Joel Embiid's a big fan and also because Thibel has not taken the steps offensively that many hope that he would and at times in the playoffs I mean you saw it coach I was watching it with you at times he became unplayable and he was down to basically 15 minutes a game due to that um do you think there's still realistic hope that the offense that Thibel's offense can get to what it needs to be to be a consistent playoff NBA starter? Uh, Ty, I do, um, because I I think the whole pandemic situation with uh, Matisse and this up took place up in, you know, regarding Toronto and not being vaccinated, I think it played with his head. And I don't think he was the same player going forward, you know, when in fact he came back. Uh, we know he wasn't able to play in those games. And uh, I just think the reaction of the whole the whole basketball community, media, fans, uh, I don't think he was ready for it. And I think he took a big step back as a result. Now, assuming he can put that aside and go forward with a fresh mind, that's why I say yes uh, to your question. And I think it's he's at a point in his career, if you can't say yes to your question, then it's time to move on. And, and that's the part that I guess that's be part of the decision making. Uh, this, that'll be part of the decision coming up soon. Now, the rumor is from all the national people are the Sixers have shopped him and that 23rd overall pick basically to every team in the league looking to try to get a player who can help them now versus another young player. You know as well as anybody how much of a crapshoot the draft is. For every maxi you get, you can get a Cork Maz who didn't fully develop TLC. We can name all the Sixers players that never became what we thought they could become. If it was just up to you, Coach, and you was either pick a player at 23rd overall or get a veteran player who can help you now, what would you prefer? Yeah, if you're a coach, uh, Ty, uh, the answer is simple. You would prefer the veteran player for the reasons that you just, I think, accurately pointed out. Uh, Yes, you can get a maxi, but that's a long shot. It just uh, simply doesn't happen. You can go over the list of the draft, you know, historically year after year and players, you know, down the line, the percentage of them that turn into really significant contributors on the line that Maxi has already done and who knows where he's headed, uh, you, you don't get them. So if in fact they could package, uh, I would fully endorse that. All right. Now you just brought up Maxi again, and I wanted to ask you about him. Um, there's been tape. We know he's a hard worker. We know how mentally tough he is. Um, recently a video came out. Now, a lot of NBA players can do this, but people get excited. He makes 14 straight corner threes. You saw the jump that he made from year one to year two as far as shooting. Um, What are the areas that you would like to see him improve, part one of the question, and then part two of the question, just how high is his ceiling after you pretty much watch every game for his first two seasons? Yeah, I I think, uh, let me go to your second thought first. I don't know that you can put a ceiling on him, given what we saw. Uh, 
you know, you're reluctant with a young player to like draw bottom line conclusions, you know, based on what I call outbursts. But I'm going to make the statement now because we see these outbursts from him too consistently. Uh, by the end of the year, he's the number three, I repeat, number three, three point shooter in terms of percentage in the league. And this is a guy who's supposedly coming out of Kentucky, fell in the draft because he wasn't able to shoot the ball. So we can dispel that myth. Uh, his, his worth ethic is such that he's developed beyond one's possible expectations. So I think literally the ceiling is the limit for him. And in terms of, you know, what would you like to see him be able to do on a consistent basis? I think really that ball is in the six or court side. A lot of times players are like they'll respond if they're good enough to what the expectations are of the team are. So my question, I throw it back to the Sixers. Who do you want this guy to be? You want this guy to be a 20 point scorer right now. You want him to have more shooting opportunities than James Harden and James be more the facilitator. I think he's capable of being a 20 point scorer. I think he's shown the early signs that we've seen, and that would be the next step for him to be a more consistent scorer as opposed to that guy who just explodes for 14 points in the third period. Talking to Coach Jim Lyon from NBC Sports Philadelphia. Coach, one of the players that takes maybe too much scrutiny here, and there's always there's been rumors all offseason that perhaps he'd be moved if they were to land a big fish, mainly because he has a max contract attached to him, and that is Tobias Harris. Uh, I think everyone agrees that he was pretty good in the playoffs, but uh, – if if a big fish became available, a guy you find out, Bradley Beal, for example, uh, Kevin Durant to be a no-brainer, would you feel comfortable moving on from Tobias Harris, even though we don't necessarily want to, just because his contract may be forced, or is he a 100% keeper in your eyes? Uh, no, uh, I would say the former, and I like Tobias. I think you know that. You and I have, have mm-hmm. talked about him on numerous occasions. As long as you have him in the right role, uh, you're not asking him to do like be the high scorer on your team or get you like 24 points a night. Uh, I think he, uh, you're dead on that he had a terrific playoff. But if in fact the Sixers brain trust and uh, and in saying that the coaches usually are very involved in those type decisions, if they think there is a like another player, like I don't, I'm not championing Bradley Beal per se, but that type of guy. Uh, is a better fit, let's say, for James Harden and Joel Embiid, then, of course, I would endorse a trade like that. But, Ty, I think what happens this time of year, uh, and rightly so, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of focus on what I call the periphery. This team is going as far as a healthy Joel Embiid and a 33-year-old James Harden are going to take them. Make no bones about that. Right, and that was actually the next thing. I only have two questions left, and one of them is about James Harden. Coach, in your in your opinion, is the guy we saw down the stretch where he oddly in that game six in the second half only took two shots, and I remember a couple times you yelling. I'm, I'm in front of you. You're yelling. I turn around. You're yelling, shoot that. You got to take that shot. And he just seemed very gun-shy for, for whatever reason. Is that the best James Harden, or could another – an offseason in which he's not rehabbing any injuries, not having any surgery – have we seen the best of them, or is there still a little juice left, elite juice left in that uh, in that orange, in that apple, et cetera? Yeah, well, you and I uh, can only, like, surmise, Ty, but I'm going to say this. If Daryl Morey, he has no choice if James is the, in control of opting in for one year. But if the Sixers deem that they're going to extend James for two years, then I have to assume that the answer to your question is yes that they feel that, and that's the most important thing, not what you or I feel. But as my eye tells me, yes, that there is more than what we saw. It's a little inexplicable to me, I have to say this. We're talking a guy who led this league in scoring on more than one occasion. And for a guy like that to say, I, I, I don't quite feel, I don't have to score in this game tonight, or I'm not going to look for my shot. That is the polar opposite mindset of what guys who lead the league in scoring have. So you have to ask yourself, why would that be the case? Why would he not look to score? Harden is a bright guy. He's played at the highest level. The only answer to for me is he didn't feel confident he could score. It's the only reason. So if the Sixers are going to sign him, they feel there's a lot more there 
than what we saw for whatever reason in those playoff games. And the last thing I want to ask you about, Coach, assuming they can't make a move and they're drafting at 23 overall, what's the type player? I'm not even going to ask you for a name because there's no telling who's going to be available. Drafts are very unpredictable. What type of player would you like to see? A wing, a backup uh uh, a backup point guard, a, t- a shooting guard. Is there any position, if it was up to you, a crystal ball, if you could make a wish, what type yeah. of player would you like them to draft if they keep the pick? A fair question, Ty, and I'm going to say this, and again, you know know my feelings on this. I really, The Harden trade to acquire James, I thought, was a very good move on Maury's part. Obviously, he knows James better than all the rest of us put together. However, the price that they paid for me was a bit steep. And what it served to do going into the playoffs is decimate at their bench. They need quality play off their bench. They did not have that in the playoffs. So to me, it's not so much about like who, what type of player, a, a backup to a three and D guy. You need a guy that can come out there and give you a high level, like 20 minute play in the late stages of the season. I'm talking playoff time in late May into June when the real teams are still playing. Yeah, we'll see if there's a guy like that available. It's going to be an interesting night, Coach. I I greatly appreciate the time and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, Ty, anytime, buddy.